So, not being on the internet, watch the service, okay? Hallelujah. That some might be saved. Hallelujah. Uh, Steve's been making videos and putting them back there on the on the bookcase or the glass case back there. So uh, you are welcome to pick them up and take them home, share them with others. Let's all stand and go to the Lord in prayer. We've got a what after baptism? No, we're not. They, they said they weren't going to be baptized, right? Okay, board of directors meet. I turned to baptistry on thinking there was going to be some people baptized, but I guess not. Okay. Unless you decide you need to get baptized, the water's warm. Okay. Praise the Lord. Sometimes you need to do your first works over again. Okay. So if you want to take of a certain service, you'll have to talk to Steve about the date. Okay? Alrighty. I know we all have lost loved ones. I want you to remember Kim Hitch. She's still in the hospital, I think. Um, also, uh, uh, Brenda Riggs is in the hospital. She had a biopsy of her lung that collapsed, so they got it back up. So, uh, we're praying that God heals her completely. Uh, Chris Smith got moved to to uh, to Nova at St. Mary's for therapy. So praise God! I'm I'm hoping and I'm praying and I'm believing God for complete healing over him. Uh, I need to eliminate that word hope. Just eliminate that word hope. Believe in God for healing. Okay. Praise God. And uh, if you got a request, uh, just make it known to the Lord. He knows what it is by an uplifted hand. Uh, Father, we just bear ourselves to you right now and ask you for divine favor. Lord, we ask you that you'd accept our prayer, that we could bring it before your throne room in a bold manner. Lord, that through the name of Jesus Christ, that's our Lord and Savior. Lord, I pray that you'd save the lost. I pray you'd heal the sick. Lord, there's several in hospital. Lord, we pray for a complete recovery on every every benefit, every case. Lord, complete recovery, restoration, more strength than they had before they went uh, into the situation. The, the devil's a liar. He has not got the truth in him. And, and we have the victory in you. We have our healing through your strife. We have redemption by the power of the blood sacrifice that you gave and finished on Calvary. Lord, I just thank you for uh, being that living sacrifice for us, Lord, but let us follow in your footsteps, Lord, that we might be anointed of your spirit and we might do the works you do, Lord, and see the lost saved in these last days that you pour out a revival upon all of us, Lord, that we be uh, committed to the revival that's ahead of us, Lord, that the lost could be saved, the sick could be healed, the dead could be raised, and, and Lord, we claim victory for the church. Lord, we know that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. We just thank you for all the promises and all your word that is life unto us. Lord, help us to, to get it in our hearts as you as you send it this direction, Lord. I pray for everyone gathered here today. Uh, give Kathy traveling graces as she's on her way back for the meeting, Lord. We just praise you and magnify you for all you do, all you've already done, because we ask these things in Jesus Christ's holy name. Everyone said amen. amen. Give him a big hand clap of praise. He's Let's lift up the name of the Lord. Oh, hi.
I'm going to let Earl bring his song to us right now. Brother Keith Smith's not my hair again. <laughs> reminds me of my, there you go. Reminds me of my mother. My sister fixed her hair and got her ready for church one day. And she looked, she looked in the mirror. And I'll never forget it. My mother said, "You can make me look like George Washington." <laughs> oh, she never was satisfied with that haircut, but I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Worship the Lord with us. Somewhere beyond the grave.
I can only do the sums that got just my memory. Too. Sometimes I can think of one, sometimes I can do I remember getting problems, but don't give God any problems. Might be a good thing. A woman tried many
Where I belong Take this world 
hope, the glorious appearing of Jesus Christ. This is not where I belong. This is not where you belong. This earth, we're just aliens, the Word of God says. Pilgrims passing through. Got our eyes on the, on the, on the, the glorious appearing. Or a home in the skies. To ever be in the presence of a loving God. I'm going to bless the offer. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for the opportunity to gather into your house. We thank you, Lord, that upon the rock of your revelation, you have revealed yourself. Jesus Christ, our Savior. Unto us, those who believe. Lord, we thank You that we can obediently give back unto You to Your church the blessing that You have blessed us with. And we thank You for it. The opportunity to give unto You worship. To give unto You praise and thanksgiving. And to give unto You of our time and an offering, Lord, that Your will be done. Your kingdom come. And do Your servants with power from on high in that which way to direct Your church, Your body. Lord, as we follow You, trusting in You, making good use of that which You blessed us with, even the time and the days that You've given us. And we don't take them for granted. But they're another day to draw closer to You. To petition You. To seek Your face. That we may find You. Lord, we thank You for it. And we would ask You now to anoint the man of God. So He would stand to proclaim Your Word. And let all that has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says unto the church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, Pastor.
Would that sound strange to you if I told you you could have first-hand knowledge? It's a process. It's a process of living for Him and allowing Him to live through you. That's the goal, is that He live through us that we might do the works of Him that sent Him. So I was studying, I was looking at, I was looking at uh, John 14 where Jesus said, I have to go to the Father. Amen. It's expedient that I go. Yes. Praise God. My goodness, He was seemed to be all they need. It was expedient that He went through the process of the cross the blood, the shed blood of Jesus Christ, it was expedient that He go through that to pay the sin debt to bring us into a place that we could be born of the Spirit of God. Yeah. Up until that time, man lived out a, a fleshly life. A fleshly life. But let me tell you something. I lived that fleshly life in this world and it took me into the places I didn't want to stay. Amen. Yes, sir. And kept me longer than I wanted to be there. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Then I could afford to pay. Praise the Lord. In full. He paid it in full. He's no respecter of person, church. He's no respecter of person. Let's all stand and go to the Lord. He appointed this day just like He appointed yesterday. Just like He's already appointed tomorrow. He appointed it for you and I one place or another. One place or another. In Christ it doesn't matter. Because we're eternal. Amen. We're eternal. Father, we just thank You for this day that You give us to come and fellowship and to worship You today. We thank You for such anointed praise and worship yeah. and testimony, Lord, of your greatness and your works through the, through the songs and, that were sang and moved our hearts. Lord, we pray that if there's anybody under the sound of our voice right here now that they would come to a real living relationship with you. Lord, that they could be uh, destined for the, the heaven you intended for everyone, everyone born in your likeness. Lord, we pray that the anointing keeps flowing out of our bellies, protruding yes. little rivers of living water, Lord. We yes. thank You yes. for Your Word that declares unto us the glorious victory that's in You. We pray You to help it to be carved into our hearts, Lord, as we serve You this day. In yes. Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I have... I had planned to go to uh, John 14, but as I was praying a moment ago, he said go to, to Hebrews chapter 12. And that's where we're going to begin. Hebrews chapter 12. And unless we get the, the fullness of the presence that we live in, we're not going to be able to, to keep ourselves against the enemy. When Jesus said it's finished, He was transformed in the spiritual realm looking down on the flesh. Right there's a picture. The flesh hanging on the cross that was beaten for our healing, that was beaten for the nation's healing, for the, beaten for the world's 
redemption, <coughs> beaten and battered to the point that in, in uh, Isaiah chapter 52 it says that he was beaten beyond human recognition. Not even to be reckon, recognized as a man he was beaten so bad. But then when he said it's finished and he gave up the ghost, gave the, the spirit up to pay the, the sin debt, to take on his shoulders the sins of you and I and the whole world, present and past and future, he was transformed into the spiritual realm. Where is the spiritual realm? It's invisible. It's invisible. It's invisible, church. He said it's like the wind. You see the evidence of it. Praise God. Praise see God. the evidence of the storms that's been hitting the earth, don't you? Well, they're just now getting started. This is the beginning of sorrows. Earthquakes and all these things the beginning of sorrow. The beginning of sorrows. A little bit of a, a, a forerunner to this. I'm going to take you back to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Yes. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth easily beset us. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, yes. the author and yes, finisher of our faith, yes. who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Praise God. I'm going to read you a little bit of a, a, a capsule down here at the bottom of the scripture in my Bible. It says, just as, the, just as a runner concentrates on the finish line, we should concentrate on Jesus. The goal and objective of our faith finisher of our faith. Yes. Our faith which has its beginning in Him. Amen. Who you, who's your faith in? It ain't in my works. No. I ain't got faith in your works to help me to get to the eternal life that He is destined for me. I can't have faith in this world or this government that's over the United States, can you? No. Or any government of man. So we're looking to Jesus. And what did he say here? He said, you got to keep your eye on him. Uh -huh. How you going to keep your eye on him? He's in the visible realm. He's in an invisible realm, church. <laughs> Beginning in him is also completed in him. Began in Him, and if you get there, it will be completed in Him. He is both the start and the end of the race. He is also the supreme witness who has already ran the race and overcome. Joy that was set before Him. His, his accomplishing our eternal redemption and His glorification at the Father's right hand. <clears throat> Enduring the cross, despising the shame, as with Christ, the humiliation of our present suffering for the gospel's sake is far outweighed by the prospect of future glory. Amen. Amen. In other words, it's worth the fight. Yes. It's worth getting on the start line to get to the finish line. It's worth the, the pressure that it's going to take to get through. Yes. The Word of God says that He has established 
angels that surround us constantly that are messengers from God. Not only to us, but from us. By the power of the Spirit that He sent back on the, on the day of Pentecost. Does He need to send back the fire to clothe with tongues every time someone's baptized the power of the Holy Spirit? I know that there's power in Him. The, the disciples, the Spirit came on them on the day of Pentecost. It came on them, in them, cloven tongues rested on them, but it was the Holy Spirit that done the work that Peter declared to the population of Jerusalem. Out of the upper room. It was not Peter's works, it was Christ's work that Peter was declaring. That's what we must do. We must declare the works of Christ that it is totally Him. It's going to be Him and it is the finish of Him. He is the beginning and the finish of my faith. And I'm aware of His constant presence when I wake up at night, when I wake up in the morning and things are going through my head and I didn't appreciate going through my head. I had to say, Lord, forgive me, help me to have my thoughts under subjection to what you would have me to think on Amen. and to pray about. Amen. And to have. That's what you must do. Right. Or if you don't, because you don't, you entertain thoughts that it becomes sin. Amen. Come on, church. we got to get on the same page with God. It's not only the right page we need to be on, it's the only page that's going to get us to the victory line of, the, of, our, of our race. The finish. It's the only thing that's going to get us to the finish. To focus. To set our focus. To set our sight on Jesus Christ. The reward is so great that Paul said it couldn't have been explained to us. Amen. He said, I hasn't seen you, hasn't heard me, there's near in the mind of man. What great thing God has. time when the Bible says that people are going to rise up against us. <clears throat> They're going to do just like the Pharisees and scribes did Jesus and the disciples. It has a way of revolving around and coming right back full circle, doesn't it? It has a way of doing that. And He would not have us be ignorant if they hated Him, they're going to hate us. Praise God. Praise God. I'm telling you, church, the world's not going to receive you well. If you're focused on Jesus all the time. they got names for you. Holy Rollers, yeah. Jesus Freaks. Yeah. Praise God and thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> Peculiar people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How in the world do you expect to operate in the power of God if you don't? Focus on the power of God. If you don't live in the power of God, if you don't, in, if you haven't experienced the power of God, I experienced the power of God. I was dead in sin. Yes. I was so dead in sin. I was almost ready to start stinking. And times I did stink, smell bad. Come on, you need to. I experienced. That change in direction. I was going down through life with a bottle in one side of my mouth and drugs in the other side and everything else going on in my life. And, and praise God, whenever I came to the altar of God in that altar, all that stuff fell off. 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 I pray that every one of y'all have experienced it. 
Let me tell you something. Even the person that has been in church and saved at nine and served God all their life has to experience death yeah. to experience yeah. life. He's no respecter of person. Praise God. Turn with me to, to John chapter 14. John 14. We're going to start reading at verse 10. Now you know that Peter's denied Jesus. Or Peter's foretold to, to in, verse, in chapter 13, he's foretold to deny Christ. Here they are at the at the supper table, the Last Supper, and you know on verse 14, chapter 14, verse 1 says, Let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions. You know that, don't you? Is that not a great promise to those that finished the race? Before, before Christ, before this was finished, then everyone that died serving God, knowing God, went into the bosom of Abraham. Paradise. Let me tell you something. That's not where Christ went to prepare places for us. Verse 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. But the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very works sake. Now, whenever I read that, whenever I read that, I went all the way back. Went all the way back. And was brought back through what's transpired in the last 25 years. Almost 26 years this October. I've got a full picture of what went took place. It's so vast, it's so magnificent, it's so great that I couldn't explain. It's like you touch one, and one touches one. Maybe the, that next one touches ten. Maybe that next one touches a hundred. Maybe that next one touches a thousand. Praise God, Gene. At least, at least believe us for the work's sake. The works have not stopped. They're so out, out forward going across the world. I mean... This is not something done in a corner. It's something done and it has expanded all over the world. Praise God. Praise God. At least believe the works. Because the works was not, was not in me. Not in Pastor Keith. The works was in Jesus Christ. Jesus that I know. 
what we think. You know it's Jesus, I know. You know about Him. You know about the Holy Spirit that's invisible. You know about the angels that surround us right now that are dispatched to us and from us. You know they know the intent of our hearts. You know the Holy Spirit reads our minds. You know God the Father knows what we have need of before we ever ask. He does! But yet we tie His hands because of unbelief. We tie His hands because we're not where we need to be. The Bible says that in the last days my people will perish from lack of knowledge Praise God! Lack of knowledge, people! It's unbelief! Lack of knowledge and unbelief is the same thing that's referred to. He said that if you said to this mountain, remove yourself and cast yourself into the sea, it will be done. Amen. Not because you did, because that would be the will of God speaking through you. A mountain that you might face, or a, a original mountain. I heard, I heard a story about a guy that didn't know how to read, didn't know how to read. Everything was falling down on him. He, he finally went into the woods behind the house and prayed for a week or two. Came back to the house, his mom was there at the house and everything. And, and he got an opportunity to lead down to a place to work and everything to preach and all. But then, then all of a sudden, it all fell through because there's a mountain in front of his house that he had to go around to get to where he needed to be. He didn't know how in the world he was going to make it. So he went back into the woods and prayed and prayed and prayed. All of a sudden, someone bought the mountain in front of him and started hobbling it away. <laughs> read the Bible, but when he went into the, the woods to pray, when he came back out, he came back reading the Word of God. Praise God. I'm telling you, God can do what it takes for you to do what He wants you to do. Right. It ain't to be heat things upon yourself. It's not to heap things on yourself. It's to help you equip people for this message of this end time that Jesus Christ has gone to the Father and He's coming again. It's all about Him. All about Him. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For the works sake, verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he hath, that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do because I go to my Father. Are you operating in greater works than what the Word of the Gospel say? Are you operating in greater works than what? Are you not a fulfillment of His Word? Do you have fruit that's going to remain? Or do you not have fruit that's going to remain? Are you preaching Jesus to a lost and dying world? Or are you listening to the government and the legal to say, you can't speak the name of Jesus? Now who are you going to obey? God or man? God. God. Come on. God. And, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. This I have not do it, did You know what ought to be coming out of our mouth every day, every night, every moment? Lord, save my kids. Amen. 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 That used to be what came out of mothers and grandmothers. Yes, Lord, save my 
kids now. I said, Lord, help me pay my bills. Lord, help me give the car. I can't get it to where I need to go. That's our priority anymore. We don't pray for salvation for our kids or our husbands or our wives or our whatever. We need to get back to basics. We need to get back to praying that Lord, make me, make me like David said, making me a brand new heart. Yes. Making me. Don't take your spirit from me even though I sinned and fell short of your glory. Please, Lord, don't take your spirit from me. I need the anointing to pray through for my loved ones, for my family, for my children, for my grandchildren, for my house, for myself. Sometimes I think I might not make it. Not easy. Not easy. But with such great promises, how can we fail? If we hold on, Verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Yes, sir. Everybody wants to base that now there, don't we? Amen. Mm -hmm. That's some of the new translations. They just leave verses out they don't like. Come on. And I will pray the Father, <coughs> and he shall give you another company. Thank you, Lord that He may abide with you forever. That forever means in times of troubles, in times of good times, in times of any situation when it's raining, snowing, or it's hot outside, the Holy Spirit is there. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth Him not. That visible, that invisible realm we're talking about. Neither knoweth Him, but ye know Him, for He dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, you don't need to look out there somewhere for your help. Your help's going to have to come out of here or you ain't going to get uh, the right kind of help. It's got to come out of here. It's got to be in you. It's got to be in you. God went up, or Moses went up on Mount Sinai. Stayed up there 40 days. The Bible says that God's hand, His finger, wrote on stones the Ten Commandments. Y'all know the story how that Aaron formed a cow and they worshipped it and when Moses came back down to the camp, he dropped the Ten Commandments and broke them. If you read on in the Scripture, Moses went back on the mountain and God said, you write them this time. You write them. Jesus broke the Word. Jesus broke the commandments. Jesus said, love your neighbors yourself. This one thing I say to you, another command, the Ten Commandments, He gave the Eleventh Commandment to love one another. Amen. 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 He brought it. He finished it. Now, we've got to do our part. We've got to spend the time. We've got to take time for God. He's done took time for us. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you yet a little while and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me because I live and ye shall live also. What is he talking about? He's talking about your spiritual eyes being open. He's the beginning of your faith. He's the finish of your faith because He's not going to leave us. He's not going to forsake us because He's right here now. There's an angelic host right here now. There's a cloud of witnesses that are present when you go home tonight. If you go to wherever you're going, whatever you're doing, you're putting yourself right in whatever way you do. Hey, there's angels. 
There's angels running around right with you. Guardian angels. They're, they're running right along with you. They're right there with you. Revelation says in the books will be old. Yeah, he's being the spirit right there. Unbelief. Unbelief. Didn't believe. Spoke evil of the man of God. Gossip about the name. Murdered the character of another. With you and in you, he that hath my commandments and keep them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Judas saith unto him, not a scary, Lord, how is it that thou wilt? Manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world. <coughs> now, is it that you're going to do this, Lord? How are you going to manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jim brought a prayer request a few weeks ago about a uh, niece that had lumps in her throat. Cancer. 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 Brought it to the Lord and God manifests healing in her. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's how He manifests Himself to us. In power. In answer petitions. Oh yeah, he's not going to go across anybody's wheel. But he can cause them sure fire of trouble. Jesus answered and said to him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come into unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which which you hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, for whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said. Peace. I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. What kind of peace did Jesus have? He had enough peace and knowledge in himself that he could stand before Pilate and say, I come to bear witness of the truth. The truth is that God the Creator created all there is created the earth, created the, the, the atmosphere, the planets, all the things that there is. He created it all. He came down and made man in His image. He created the angels. And there's nothing without Christ. Peace. Not as the world gives give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Amen. Amen. And that's serious right there. Yes. You know, people fear things that they don't even see. Fear things. Go over and read Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. See what it says about fear. Very first thing it says, all those that fear Fear and unbelieving. The first two things that he says is going to go to hell. 
The fearful and the unbelieving will have their place in the lake of fire and brimstone. How are you going to find this peace? Only in Jesus. Because He's the only way not to go to hell. To not be cast into the lake of fire. You have heard how I said unto you, I go away and I come again unto you. If you love me, ye will rejoice. You would rejoice because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you because before it come to pass that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, but the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. And he's here today. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so do I, I do. Arise, let us go hence. Arise, let us go hence. Where did they go? Where did they go hence? They went to the Garden of Gethsemane. Amen. Amen. They went to the Garden of Gethsemane. Turn to Genesis chapter 12. You know, I, I, for a long, long time, I've, you know, I had to go to Knoxville a lot to work over the years and everything. And and it got such a burden to have to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and have to go across the river into Knoxville, through Knoxville and around Knoxville. I got to the place that I called the, the Tennessee River over there going into Knoxville. I started calling the heat. <laughs> Far away country. Egypt. Place of trouble. Place of birth. Place Egypt. You witness that, can't you, Arm? Egypt. Terrible. They're having a terrible time in Egypt. Seems like it's always been that way. But let me tell you something. From the beginning in Genesis 12 10. All the patriarchs had to go. Genesis 12, 10. And there was a great was a famine in the land, and Abram went down into Egypt to sojourn there, for the famine was grievous in the land. Genesis 26, 2. Genesis 26, 2. And the Lord appeared unto him. This is Isaac he's talking about. The Lord appeared unto Isaac and said, Go down, go, go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which thou hast found. But, but I misread that, but he did go to Egypt. Isaac did. But then this place right here, he said to, he said to Isaac, Stay in the promised land. Because in a famine, he can give you the food that you need. He can double the portion. But Isaac went into Egypt also. Yeah. Yeah, just like his daddy. Okay. And then Joseph in... Uh, why, why do I say Joseph? 37 in, verse, in chapter 37 verse 33 and he went and, and he knew it and said it, it is my son's coat Come and let us sell him to the 
Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh, and his brother was content. They sold him into Egypt for 20 pieces of silver. And he was carried into Egypt and sold to Potiphar. Sold to Potiphar. Joseph was a example of Christ. Savior. He was a redeemer. He redeemed the house of Jacob, his father. Go with me to Jacob in 48 verse 5. 48 verse 5. And now thy two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, which were born unto thee in the land of Egypt before I came unto thee into Egypt, are mine as Reuben and Simeon. They shall be mine. So Jacob and his house went into, into Egypt. Then in Matthew chapter 2 verse 13, Matthew chapter 2 verse 13, here you see Jesus going into Egypt. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto Joseph in a dream and said, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt and be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek to seek the young child to destroy him. The world will seek you out and just try to destroy you. You can look at the scripture. You can look into the scripture and see where you've been and where you're at right now and what God wants you to do to come out of bondage. Let's all stand. That's what God wants. He wants you to be prepared. He wants you to be equipped. He wants you to be aware of the unseen realm that surrounds us. There's dimensions that we don't see. That there's other forces. Paul said that our battles are not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and dominions one day I was it's not been you remember the day I come on tell you that that lady in the window at the bank prophesied to me what been about three months ago about three months ago I went around the bank up on the other end of town, pulled around the bank, had some deposit to make. I handed the lady, the bank had already closed, so I went to the drive to I hand put in that tray there at the window, I put in a tray the deposits for the <coughs> missions here. The lady I had never seen before. She was sitting there, she looked to be about 60 years old with glasses, and sitting, sitting there, she took the thing, another lady was doing the thing over there and I was sitting there she finished up doing her thing with them papers and she looked at me and all of a sudden she jumped up and that when she said there's going to be a tax on you from other dimensions do you hear what I'm saying she got to my face and I said she was persistent she repeated herself <laughs> I went back two or three times to see if I could see her and I never have seen her again.
she got up in that window. And, and I couldn't imagine somebody in a business getting in your face like that and, tell, and prophesying to you about God as a plan and you're going to get attacked from other dominions. Dimensions. Dimensions, not dominions. Dimensions. There's unseen realms that are battling around us all the time. Well, let me tell you something. More wars than they are against us. Right. More wars than they are against us. The angels charge to your care. For your safety. For your benefit. But if you're not where, you're, where you should be, if you've not, if your name's not in the Lamb's Book of Life, you're not a benefactor. You're not a benefactor if you've not confessed Jesus and you believe His Word and love Him the way He loved you, then you're not in the realm that, that you're going to receive those things from God. The only thing God will do for you is to hear a prayer of repentance. He might hear you and answer a prayer. But I want to encourage you. Forsake the world. Do everything you know to do to prepare yourself for the judgment. Do everything you can. Prepare yourself because if you don't prepare you're not watching and waiting where the tree falls, it's going to lay. Where the tree falls, it's going to lay. And I don't want you to go to hell. The Lord don't want you to go to hell. And nothing you can ever do will keep you from going to hell except the blood of Jesus. Today, should be the most glorious day for somebody in this service. Yes, sir. Yes. You know, we battle against the same principles and powers that Jesus did when He walked this earth. He came upon people that were possessed with demons, oppressed by demons. Let me tell you something. He's able to cast them off of you just the same way He was then. Amen. He gave us authority over the principalities and powers of darkness. Rivers of living water. Thank you, Lord. Gushing out of the throne room of God to quench your thirst. You got to do something to get thirsty to. Are you serving God? If the Lord chose this day, if the Lord chose this day to tell Gabriel to sound the trumpet, what would your destiny be? If Jesus said, Come up here, you blessed in the Lord. Would you need more instruction? Would your lamp be trimmed? Or would you need oil for your lamp? Come on, church. This is important. This is important to you. This is important to you. It really is. Come here. See this girl right here? She loves the Lord. She's doing the best she knows how to do. But she got to some concerns she came to me with. I said, well, how are we going to fix this? How are we going to fix this then? I 
I told these girls, I said, you know, you just need to approach the women in the church. Approach the women in the church. Don't let them run off front you. Approach them and say, look here, I, I, I need you to help me with this. I don't understand this. Yes, absolutely. I need you to, I need, I need to know what scripture this would be to help me. Okay? Because I guarantee you, they done been there, had a bunch of them, and don't want some more of them. Unless God sent them, right? Unless God sent them, right? Unless God sent them. Now God's got a plan for every person in here, just like the men. I've been where where she's been, where the guys have been. Spent 34 years in and out of that place. Busted, disgusted. Didn't know where to turn. Just looking for a friend. Just somebody that would encourage me. Instead of shunning me. Because I don't dress like they do. I don't dress like they do in Pastor Friday's church. He never comes to church. Never preached without a suit on before the, he came to here. Hey. Never had. But look here. These, these girls and these guys need, need to be loved. They need to be loved. Well, let me tell you something. 
We've got a policy around here. It's a policy that we have around here that men minister to men and women minister to women. Amen. Amen. Now, I don't expect the men to come and attach themselves to these girls and try to help them to know what the Word of God says. I expect the women to do that. There's been times that people have raised up and said, well, we want to start a women's auxiliary. It lasted a week or two. But women need to form some things. Women need to form some things to help each other. Come on. Uh, we got people that are up of other churches that is okay. <laughs> we got people of other churches that have volunteered to come into the women's home to do uh, Bible studies and stuff. Yeah, going every Monday. We've had people go up there, and let me tell you something. Some people come in there, they may have demons or something attached to them. They may have other spirits attached to them. But let me tell you something. For a child of God, that shouldn't be a, a fear factor. That shouldn't be a fear factor. Amen. Because when you recognize it, you know what to do about it. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. every knee's going to bow. Amen. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. And let me tell you something. Men, be men. Be men of God. Make that love relationship with Christ that you're going to be faithful to Him and you'll be faithful to one another. You'll be faithful to one another. Now, I'm accountable to my wife. I mean, whenever, I, whenever I'm out all day running around don't get home at 10 o'clock at night, she says, where you been? <laughs> what do you do today? And she expects me to tell her from the time I left the house all the way through. And I'm accountable to do that. And I, I can do it because I ain't lying. Because all liars will go to hell too. You read in Revelation 21 8. It's all right there, Pastor Friday. I've been to the coffee shop with Pastor Friday. He's going to let me do nothing wrong. He, he and him, we like that gourmet coffee, don't we? Chase likes it too, don't you, Chase? Yes, sir. That coffee's good, ain't it, brother? Yes, sir. Uh, Josh does too. It's good coffee. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, back where we were, this is a serious matter. The Lord came, the trumpet sounded right then. Yes, yes. Are you ready to go? I couldn't say you're dismissed without giving you, enough, giving you an opportunity to say, I need prayer. I need prayer. My brother, there he's a new man who's meant something. What was your name again? Steve. 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 He needs prayer. He, he raised his hand and said, I need prayer. Whenever he's, he raised his hand and said, that he need prayer, there would have been two or three men around him right there and say, I'm going to pray. That's the most powerful weapon we have. Prayer, talking to God. I can't, I can't answer His prayer for Him, but I know who can. Just a couple of go around Him and pray for Him. Ask Him what He needs prayer over. Don't go praying for rain and sunshine and uh, snow and everything at the same time. Go ask Him what He needs prayer about. You might have the answer. God might use you to answer His needs. Is there any more that needs prayer? Uh, Edith needs prayer. Some of you ladies go over and pray with Edith. You ladies at the home, you're just as you're just a part of this church as anybody else. It don't mean I mean you can be in uh, out there in a park or somewhere, be somebody's wife or something. I mean, get involved. Don't stand the eye. Get involved. Women and men, get involved. This is your church. God's called you to be here. You're not here by chance. You're here by appointment. That appointment's the same appointment I have. It's to get closer to God. It's the world when the trumpet sounds, I'll be ready to go. And, and if you're if you're praying 
connect with somebody else to get their needs met, then God's going to meet your needs. Amen. That's the way God works. Anybody else needs prayer? Anybody? I mean, if you're ashamed of Him for, for me, if you're ashamed of Him for the Father, you need prayer. Father, we just bow before you right now and ask you for divine faith. Lord, out of our belly shall the living water, Lord. That living water comes from your throne room, Lord. It is a refreshing drink of eternal life, Lord, that we all need to be refreshed with and that we need to be covered with. Lord, let us be the instruments in your hand. Let us be the vessels that you use to spread this gospel good news. Of of salvation, redemption through Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray and dispatch angels to go before us to prepare our ways. Lord, that we do the work of the ministry. Bless this church, Lord, that we might know you and the power of your resurrection. The power of your resurrection, Lord. The first fruits of the resurrection, Lord the finisher of our faith. Finisher of our faith. All hearts and minds. All hearts and minds. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. I was listening to the guy. This is the guy on the, on the internet a while ago. He was talking about Elvis Presley. He said Elvis Presley knew how to motivate a crowd. He said he'd get out there. You could tell he'd been in a Pentecostal church before in his life because he'd get out there shaking and he'd get out there to challenge the people to get involved with the thing. And they'd go to screaming and crying and everything else. And you can't even motivate people to raise their hands and say, Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Elvis could do it. In the world, see, why can't we be, why can't we motivate one another to, for the for the excitement, the adrenaline, the adrenaline that God put in us to get up and get another wind and go forward again? Let's do it, church. Next Sunday, let me remind you again. Next Sunday, bring someone with you that they'll hear the plan of salvation. I've already been there. I've already done the plan of salvation. I had some for somebody else. No, that's not it. Because these, this is the day that's going to be the greatest revival that ever hit the face of the earth. These are the days. And if you don't know, if you don't know how to lead someone to Christ, if you don't have the experience to, to step out into this realm and say, I know your answer. I know what will fix this thing. Let me pray with you. They'll pray something and tell them they got something. Pray with them as they pray, and God will give it to them as they pray. He ain't gonna give it to them because you prayed. They gotta participate. Okay? You're liberty. Praise God. I guess the